This segment of Delmarva Life is brought to you by State Farm Insurance. The Great Plains are getting hit again after these storms tore through Kansas, Nebraska, and Oklahoma yesterday with tornadoes. For the first time in its history, a flood emergency was declared in Oklahoma City. Forecasters say these conditions could continue through Mother's Day Sunday. Well, despite that weather in the Midwest, this year's tornado season got off to a relatively slow start. In fact, according to WBOC Chief Meteorologist Dan Satterfield, it's one of the slowest tornado seasons in history. Preliminary numbers from NOAA show that there have been 214 tornadoes so far in 2015, not including yesterday. That compares to 305 last year at this time. Dan says nobody knows for sure why the season has been slow. It could be the result of chilly spring weather patterns, but he predicts this year's tornado season will pick up. And these powerful storms obviously can cause an incredible amount of damage, so it is important for you to be prepared. Joining us to tell us more about how to protect ourselves, our home and our family, is State Farm Agent Tom Pronti. Tom, thanks for coming in. Sure, really glad it. to be here. Okay, so uh, let's say a tornado comes, we are at home, what should we do to try to protect ourselves? Well, best case scenario, you have a cellar or a basement you can get down to. You want to get to the lowest level. Mm -hmm. So if you can get into the basement or cellar and you have one, you get under a workbench, something sturdy. Right. If you don't have a basement or cellar, then you want to move to the interior of the house. You want to compartmentalize, you know, close the doors, and you want to get to the lowest level possible and then get under something sturdy. Get in a bathtub and pull a mattress over the top of you. Stay away from windows. Stay away from glass. Stay yeah. away from windows. Flying debris is very dangerous. Do you have any advice for people who may live in a mobile home? Mobile homes are not designed to withstand tornadoes. Mm -hmm. um, even ones that are tied down have problems um, because they have a large surface area for the wind to push. So uh, in a mobile home situation, you want to know ahead of time where the prearranged disaster areas are. If you're unsure, go to a friend or a family that has a structure you feel safe in. If that's not available to you, and the last resort would be to find a low-lying area, lie down, cover your head and neck with your arms. But that would be if last there's nothing resort. else available. Even there, you have to be careful if you're in a low-lying like a ditch or something like that. If it, it, most of the time when you have tornadoes, you have water, and if you're laying in a ditch, water accumulates and you have lightning, yeah. and then that's a bad situation. Exactly. You could also drown. Um, you can drown with a teaspoon of water in the wrong situation. So just, you know, best much. case scenario, know where you're going to go ahead of time. What if we're on the road? Well, cars are a dangerous place to be in a tornado. Uh, a car or a truck can be flipped with ease by the storm. So. You want to get out of the car as soon as you hear the warning. If you see a funnel cloud, you want to get to a structure. You want to get to some place. Don't go to a bridge or an overpass and get under those. That's a, a, a common misconception because those create air flows. They're dangerous situations. And don't try to outrun it. You'll never outrun it. No. So just you want to get, and, and again, the worst case scenario is you get in a low-lying area and cover yourself the best you can. Okay, so say you're at a store or somewhere, you're out and about. You don't necessarily have a plan for a tornado. Do you have some advice in that situation? Don't go to the parking lot and get in your car. Move okay. to the interior of the building. Move away from windows and doors. Try to get inside the structure where you're going to have uh, as much uh, or the least amount of exposure to glass mm -hmm. and any kind of flying debris. Okay, so there's some great things to do if you're in the situation. Before we get to being in the situation, is there something we can do to prepare? Uh, you should always have an emergency disaster kit in the house mm -hmm. and make it convenient, have it placed where everybody knows where it is. Um, in that situation, you should have bottled water, some kind of a food source, and, and, a, and a first aid kit. Right. Um, you should probably also have an emergency kit in your, your vehicle outside as well, just in case you're stuck out somewhere. What about my important oh. documents? Uh, passports, social security cards, insurance documents should all be in a waterproof safe uh, you know, fireproof safe. You can get those at Walmart even. And uh, put them in inside a, a, you know, where you know it's going to be able to be accessible after the storm. And always explain to your children how to react as well as what the signals and, and warnings and all that mean. The, it's very important that they understand when the siren goes off what it means and mm -hmm. what they're supposed to do. Keep your head, stay calm, uh, proceed with caution to what you're supposed to be doing. But the children need to know when that siren goes off what it means. Okay, so no matter what kind of disaster we may find ourselves in, is there any advice that you would give, the most important thing to keep in mind when disaster strikes? Be calm, yeah. you know, have a plan. 
um, discuss the plan ahead of time. Don't lose your head, don't panic. Don't worry about the material items? Don't worry about the material items. The mm -hmm. most important thing is yourself and your loved ones. All right, good advice. Tom, um, thank, thank you, you so it. much. And if you would like to learn more about how to protect yourself with State Farm Insurance, go to our website, WBOC.com, and click on our picture at the top of the page. Well, just like State Farm, some of our WBOC news personalities are like a good neighbor. Case in point, WBOC's Paul Butler, who can be seen every weeknight on WBOC News. But there's a lot that you may not know about Paul. Our Sean Stryker sits down with him to learn more in this week's Know Your Neighbor. And we're getting to know a little more about coastal hospice and hats. A big event coming up, Hats for Hospice. Find out how you can be a part of all the fun. Plus, Jimmy and I decorate our own hats ahead of the Preakness Stakes. Delmarva Life, we'll be right back.